why can't you talk about the way things obviously are without being labeled a conspiracy theorist? See, I can't tell people that um, the Ron Paul campaign got hijacked, for example, that it um, was purposely thrown off course and and um, caused to uh, fail by people who in wanted it to fail. I can't say that without without somebody thinking, oh, oh, you're that's not you're a conspiracy theorist. You you believe crazy stuff. Uh, that you, we can't believe in conspiracies. Well, you know, <laughs> that's stupid. That's that's just idiotic. First of all, to rule out the possibility that some people may conspire to bring about a. a a state of affairs that doesn't yet exist but that they would prefer this is the only reason anybody ever acts okay that's the only reason anybody ever does anything because they believe whether they know they believe it or not that the action will bring about a state of affairs that that person the actor prefers all action is for that reason there's there are no exceptions ever not when i say action i don't mean movement okay um i don't mean a reflexive movement turning in your sleep um scratching an itch without thinking about it that kind of stuff that's not what we mean by action that's i mean human action as defined by uh, uh ludwig von mises um which is to act rationally and now again rational it doesn't need to be shown that all action is rational or even assumed it's it's it, it all comes back to the action was undertaken because the individual believed that um, the action would result in a state of affairs that he prefers Think, try to think of exceptions. Try to think of a really bad situation. Oh, yeah? Well, what about the guy who is um, held at gunpoint by uh, sadistic evil aliens who force him to um, rape and torture his, uh, his mother? Because if he doesn't, um, they, they're holding something over his head. They're, they're going to kill... Uh, they're going to rape, rape and torture his mother, and they're also going to do the same thing to everyone else in his family. So he needs to rape and torture his mother now, or um, his, uh, or they're going to do it to everybody. So if he does it, he's doing it because he believes that that action will result in a state of affairs that he prefers. And in this case... It's the state where uh, only his mother become, gets raped and tortured. Uh, that's the one he prefers. He prefers that. If he does it, it's because he prefers that over everybody else in his family getting raped and tortured. You see? There is no exception to this. There are never, ever any exceptions to this rule. All action is for this reason. Okay? So... Now, there is, there, there are these, there's the mainstream media, okay? You know what that is, right? It's, it's, uh, an abstraction that consists of, um, media outlets, uh, um, CNN, MSNBC, uh, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox News, um, uh, the many others, them, and, and then there are radio stations, that are popular and they're in uh, every city pretty much in, in uh, throughout the the states in the Union all of the cities have radio outlets that that um, many of them carry shows that are syndicated such as the Rush Limbaugh show he has what was it like 20 million million viewers a day or listeners whatever he gets um, okay them the there are um, Newspapers and magazines and whatnot. Okay, a great deal of this stuff is owned by a small number of people. Not not all of it is owned by the same people, of course, but 
um, it, it, for example, the, the Associated Press owns a great many uh, cable news channels and uh, uh, local stations and um, uh, they own some newspapers, I think, or maybe they don't anymore. I don't know. Um, but whatever. It, these, it, all of the uh, newspapers in the country, the television stations, radio stations, um, all of the sources of information – um, except for the internet, is owned by a, a you know a couple of handfuls of people. Okay, now they have a platform whereby they can convince you to do something. Okay, they do it all day long. They um, they people pay them to uh, broadcast these uh, sections of 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 their medium. You know. If it's television, little television clips, it, and they do that to convince people to buy the products of the person who is paying for the advertising, okay? They, they're convincing you to buy stuff, right, with the advertising. Now, the content of the programs also, they uh, there's all this stuff going on in the world, and they can't report it all, okay? But their job is to tell us what's going on in the world, so they have to decide what they're going to tell us, right? They're going to have to pick pick and choose between all the stuff that's going on in the world and they're going to have to decide what is going to be the news what wh out of all the stuff that goes on today what should we report because you know you can't report everything so they have to make this decision um and they decide and the, whatever they end up deciding they made that decision because they believe that that decision will bring about a state of affairs that they prefer. Okay? Remember, that's the only reason anyone ever acts. You'll never think of an exception to it. Go your whole life. Try. Bring them to me, and I'll show you how he did it because he believed that it would result in a state of affairs that he prefers. Okay? This is this is uh, the case. Now, they can select news that they believe the selection of will bring about a better state of affairs, okay? And they will. You understand? They, that's just what's going to happen, period. They're going to select the news, not because they're thinking, um, let's see, I, I wonder what the best state of affairs for uh, most people in, in Alabama is. Or most people in the United States is. What's the best state of affairs for them? I want to bring that about. No. Nobody nobody acts in, in, in that way. Except perhaps by happenstance. If it, if it happens to bring about a state of affairs that they desired, then they'll act in that way. But that's not the ultimate uh, goal of everybody. Everybody acts to bring a, about a state of affairs that he desires. That she desires. Everyone does this for the same reason. Um. And this is not to say that everybody is completely selfish. It doesn't matter. Whatever. For whatever reason uh, a person does or whatever a person happens to do, um, it, it is always done because the person believes that it will bring about a state of affairs that is preferable to the state of affairs that exists. Okay? Now, in order to not believe that the people who own all these media outlets – uh, choose the media they choose because they believe it will bring about a state of affairs that they prefer. I anyone who does not believe that is an idiot. You're, what you're trying to believe is that these people are unique. That they're not like everybody else. They don't really want to act in their own self-interest. They want to act in the self-interest of society as a whole or whatever their audience is or whatever you think they're supposed to be serving. That's what that's what you're that's what you need to believe if you believe that they're not uh, manipulating the news. If you think that the people who own this this shit are not uh, hiring the reporters they hire for a reason, a reason that that they that is important to them. If you think that that they didn't hire the staff they hired because the owner believes that it'll bring about a state of affairs that he prefers, you're stupid. You need to show me an example um, of, of him acting 
because he believed that it would bring about a state of affairs that he does not prefer, that he, he prefers some other state of affairs. So his action was to go and, and um, uh, cause himself to be unhappy, to do something that he doesn't uh, have any interest in doing. People don't do stuff that they don't have any interest in doing unless they're forced to. And even when they're forced, the only reason they do it is because they believe that the state of affairs that will arise from them doing it is preferable to the state of affairs that would arise if they didn't do it. See? So you can force people by threatening them with death. You know, you say, go um, sweep that floor or I'm going to kill you. So the reason this person swept the floor is because he prefers to sweep the floor than to be dead. Okay? No exceptions. Remember. So if there aren't any exceptions to this, uh, it follows logically that um, the the uh, news, it, it, after a few steps, it, it follows, it, it ends up following that the news is manipulated. Um, I guess I could, uh, one day I'll, be, I'll make you a syllogism so you believe me. But tr trust me, take my word for it for now. Um, or don't, whatever. Okay. So, now, did the Raw Ball campaign, uh, was it derailed? Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, that's not the state of affairs preferred by um, any of the media outlets who interviewed Ron Paul uh, between October or November of 2011 and, what was it, when Romney secured the nomination? I don't know, May, April, May, June, somewhere in there, whatever. Um, during that time, uh, Ron Paul didn't have any uh, interviews on any uh, mainstream media outlets and he, he wasn't ever covered without um, the person who covered him. And, and and if you first off, if you compare the times that they covered, uh, talked about what some other candidate was doing to the amount of times they they covered him, um, the the amount of times they covered or talked about him, interviewed or talked about, um, is it, very small. That very they, he didn't get a lot of attention at all. But the attention he did get. There were questions that were always asked every single time, and I defy anyone to show me one single example of this not happening. Um, if if CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, actually those those uh, old ones, those three, the big three, whatever you call them, ABC, CBS, and NBC, I don't remember them ever having talked to him or touched him at all. But the ones that did the cable channels, uh, MSNBC did have him on a, f a couple times, I think, and Fox News did, and uh, CNN, I think, did. But every time they would mention uh, Mitt Romney, and they would ask Ron Paul, so, um, tell us, why are you running, really? We all know you can't win. And they didn't always say, we, we all know you can't win. But they did ask the question in that tone of voice, um, why are you running? every single time. Now why are you really running? This was a question that was asked pretty much every single time they interviewed him. And in addition to that, they brought up another candidate every time. It was usually Mitt Romney. Sometimes it would be somebody else, maybe Perry or Gingrich, but usually Mitt Romney. They would say, so um, uh, Dr. Paul, um, who do you think is going to win this uh, this uh, nomination? You think it's going to be you think it's going to be Mitt Romney? Yeah, that's what we're thinking. You know, they would they would suggest that every time, every time they would mention Mitt Romney, they would not do an interview with Ron Paul or a story about him without mentioning the other guy and without suggesting that Ron Paul will lose and the other guy will win. Now, keep in mind that this is at a time when um, Ron Paul. Well, I mean, it goes all the way through the whole thing, but it, it was also during a time when Ron Paul was winning straw polls. OK, he was he was the one who was. He won that first Iowa, Iowa straw poll in, what was it, in December or something, I think. And um, and he, he won it the, the time before, too, during the 2008, uh, at the beginning of that nomination process. He won it then, too. And uh, I remember the, the talking heads were all saying, when they talked about the uh, caucus, the Iowa caucus, um, so uh, what if Ron Paul wins? And they didn't mention this every day, they, but the, when they did, they they maybe three times or four altogether uh, from the time uh, when it, 
everybody had announced up till the caucus itself. It was a month or two, three, maybe somewhere in there. Um, it was a handful of times that they ever talked about or interviewed Ron Paul or mentioned him or anything. Just very few times. Um, and, uh, oh, they were asking about the, they were, uh, since he was winning these polls, since he was polling ahead of everybody and ahead of the president, you know, it was looking like this was going to be the nominee. He was the guy. But there was a lot of voices out there saying, uh, according, now that's what it looked like according to the polls, but they, the media didn't, it didn't look like that from what they said at all. It looked like he wasn't even running. Um, he ended up winning that Iowa caucus. Remember the one that they told you he lost at the beginning? And then we found out later after Romney had secured the nomination. Oh, by the way, after all, yeah, it turns out Ron Paul did win. Well, back before that uh, caucus took place, they were saying uh, things like, <coughs> well, what if Ron Paul does win this? It looks like there there are a lot of Ron Paul supporters in Iowa. We, we don't know what the hell's going on here. This is crazy weird. But... um. There are a lot. What if he does win? And and the the conclusion was well, if he does win, um, then it just we it, it, this is going to be an exception to the rule. Remember, there's this old rule. There's this old uh uh, uh pattern that wh whoever wins the uh the Iowa caucus is the one that ended up being the nominee, right? Because and that's easy to understand. Everybody, the Republican um, voters, the people who prefer the Republican Party. And it's like their team, you know. They think about it like they think about their favorite football team. They just support it. It's their team. Uh, they have this uh, attitude that they are going to get behind their nominee. Whoever he turns out to be, even if it, he's not their guy that they liked, they're going to get behind the nominee and vote for him. This is a, this is a rule. This is something that is un understood by all Republicans. So th that goes into effect right away. It's like it, it, once you once you have the Iowa caucus, everybody sees, oh, okay, that's the, whoever the winner there is. They start looking at him and thinking, well, what's, huh, I guess I could get to like this guy. What's good about him? Why are all these other Republicans voting for him? And uh, he may end up being the nominee. I guess maybe I'll start convincing myself that he's the one we like. Um, that That's what goes on. And maybe that they, that reasoning isn't isn't done in uh, uh, on on a conscious level, but it the, it it does happen. So anyway, so there's that old, old rule that says whoever wins the Iowa caucus uh, ends up being the nominee. And so the media was looking at the possibility that Ron Paul would win the Iowa caucus. And so whenever they talked about it. Now, keep in mind, this is only a handful of times. They're talking about this campaign every day, all day long, all of them. And th uh, between the whole damn uh, conglomeration of outlets, um, he was covered, I, I can count the times probably on, on two hands, between the time the whole thing started, before everybody even announced, back at the beginning of the December, all the way up through January, that caucus, um, they... Uh, we're covering this nomination every day, but the, the total amount of times. Is, so that means they're talking about people like Michelle Bachman, uh, Mitt Romney, Rick Perry, um, the Herman Cain. So they're talking about them a lot, but um, uh, barely ever mentioning Ron Paul. And uh, despite all this, it looks like he might win that poll or that that caucus. And so they said, well, if he wins, I guess that's just an exception to the rule because we already know for it's a foregone conclusion that he can't possibly win the nomination. Now, they're saying this even though he's polling ahead of the current president. OK, so it was decided, look, you're an idiot if you don't understand that it was decided beforehand that Ron Paul was not going to be the next president. OK, it was decided by who? Well, uh, if, I don't know. I don't know who. I, I don't have to know. I don't even care. Uh, do I think uh, that some people got together in a smoke-filled room and, and talked about it and decided, okay, we are going to sabotage Ron Paul's campaign in this, that way, that way, and the other? Um, I, I don't know. That may have happened. Who cares? It doesn't matter. I don't know. But it's obvious that whoever owns... The, 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 
MSNBC, CBS, ABC, um, Fox News, all them, they uh, uh, did not want uh, Ron Paul to win. So, and I don't know, maybe there were some press out there that were favorable of him, but uh, for the most part, the, the people who, you think those reporters really get to decide what they cover? You, you really think they have, they have a car, a carte blanche to just um, go and pick whatever stories they want? You don't think they're told what kind of stories to pick? You don't think they're hired for their, for, for their persuasions? You don't think they're selected? You, you really think the owner of the, of the media outlets actually doesn't care who he hires? You think he really doesn't care what kind of news they're going to report? Well, you'd have to believe that he's unique. You'd ha have to believe that he's not like everybody else in the world who has his own self-interest um, in mind every time he acts. So no, that it, it's really funny because you don't need to be a kook to believe that um, people who own uh, media outlets want a certain uh, picture of the world. They have some picture of the world that they have in mind and they want the world to look like. And I'm sure right now, uh, this is true for everybody. Right now, the, tr the world doesn't look the way uh, that you want it to look. So you want to change the world. Everybody wants to do that. So, But we're supposed to believe that these guys who own these media outlets, they're not like that. Come on, get real. Look, you're a kook. If you believe that it's, if you believe that uh, the people who own um, media outlets are not driven by their own self-interest, you're an idiot. You're, you're you're kooky. You're crazy. Okay. And no, you don't need to believe that there's a conspiracy amongst them all to do to get some to arrive at some outcome on these things, on these elections, to decide who gets into office, to decide what laws will be written. What everything, what government does. No, you don't need to believe that. And I, it's it's probably the case that a lot of these people, um, very rich people who have a great deal of influence over what goes on in the world, uh, don't really necessarily agree with each other on a lot. You know, there could be a lot of infighting, um, a lot of what's that even mean? A lot of fighting or, or disagreement among them there's disagreements among everybody and and they're not in a club but they are in a class and again i can't stress this enough if if you believe that those people the people who have more money than anybody else in the world don't use their money to bring about a state of affairs that they prefer you believe something about them that you don't believe about anybody else in the entire world Everybody acts in their own self-interest. Everybody.